about another month and a half, guys, before Star Wars Episode Seven comes out. So tonight on the Edit Bay, we're going to take a look at the design of the new lightsaber effect and how to recreate it in After Effects. Let's take a look at what's different this time around in the next Star Wars film. Lightsabers in the past have been very even looking. They've always looked cool. But if you take a look at the design from the new film, this lightsaber has a couple of different qualities to it. Now, never mind the fact that we have this uh, crossbeam section right here. I'm not really going to talk too much about that, um, although the techniques that we'll cover tonight could easily be applied to this. What I'm really concerned about is this the actual lightsaber part. Things are a little bit uneven now. Instead of straight lines, we have this jagged, almost fractal noise looking thing that goes through the lightsaber. It also pulsates. Brightness kind of flickers on and off. It just looks like there's some distortion in the air and it just looks meaner. It's a cool look. It's a very cool look. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to recreate this in After Effects. I'm a huge fan of working smarter, not harder. We're going to be using two tools from Video Copilot. One of them is a free preset that will actually help us create the lightsaber and adjust certain parameters such as thickness, length, color, and that kind of thing. The other is a really inexpensive plugin, also from Video Copilot, that's going to allow us to add the distortion and really customize the way that this thing moves and gives, gives it that you know, almost vibrating look. Both of these effects, by the way, uh, I've got links in the description to send you over to Video Copilot to go ahead and download them and install them on your machine. So I have here this blank plate. We're basically just going to be using these toys right here as a guide to overlay our lightsaber. Now, if you go over to Video Copilot and you install this lightsaber preset, um, it's worth mentioning that this particular tutorial on Video Copilot, which you should totally watch, it's only like 11 minutes long, but it's a very old tutorial. It was one of the first ones that Andrew Kramer did and Actually, I think he was running After Effects 7, I think, when he did it. So this is a very old preset. I went ahead and I installed it on my machine with Windows 10 and, you know, After Effects 2015. And when I installed it and applied it to footage for the first time, this is what I got. In fact, let me go ahead and create a, a new solid. I'm going to hit Control Y, create a new solid, and we'll just call this Saber. When I apply this to the solid, I get this... Um, alert screen that's saying that this favorite contains references to missing effects. So I think what happened is, you know, so many different versions of After Effects have come out since Andrew Kramer and the team at Video Copilot originally wrote this uh, preset that it looks like they're trying to reference effects that no longer ship with After Effects. Um, go ahead and click OK on this if you run into that. I actually haven't had any trouble in playing around with this preset, so you should be good to go. If you follow the link in the description over to Video Copilot, um, go ahead and watch the 11 minute tutorial when you before you download and install the, uh, the preset here. Basically what this allows you to do is set a start position like so, and an end position, which I'll go ahead and stay right about there. So we have a straight line and you can, you can adjust parameters such as thickness, uh, you, the glow intensity and so on, and of course your color. So we'll go ahead and change this to red. And it really simplifies the entire process for you. You can actually uh, adjust your extend. You can actually have it animate on and off if need be. And there's a ton of cool things you can do. Worth mentioning, and again, they'll mention this in the tutorial, but it doesn't matter how you slice it. Applying a lightsaber effect to video is going to involve rotoscoping, meaning it's going to involve a frame-by-frame -frame edit of the position properties and shape properties of a mask. So what really makes this new look, this new lightsaber stand out, is the fact that it looks, it almost appears to have that fractal noise or distorted, that almost turbulent look to it. Um, and we can accomplish that a couple of ways. We could add a layer of fractal noise on here, mask it off. We could add the effect from the distort category called turbulent displace down here. Uh, but Video Copilot has a really cool plugin called Heat Distortion, which uh, originally shipped with their Jet Strike 3D model pack, but I think now they're selling it as a standalone plugin for like 25 bucks. Pretty cheap. Again, follow the link in the description. That will help us streamline that entire process. But it's important to note that heat distortion must be applied to a footage layer. So we do have these two layers right here. Um, if I were to apply it to an adjustment layer, it wouldn't work. If I were to apply the heat distortion layer to my solid layer, it wouldn't work. You'd do some really wonky things. So in order to get both of these layers, the solid layer and our footage layer, to behave as a single footage layer, we would just have to pre-comp it. So you can just go ahead and select both of your layers, right-click on it, and go to pre-compose. 
which I've already done. We've got now this other pre-composed uh, footage layer with my uh, lightsaber here. Now, all we need to do now is apply the heat distortion plugin. So heat distortion is really cool. It takes a lot of things like fractal noise and distortion and blurs and that type of thing, and it just throws it all into one plugin and allows you to control all these things with a few simple sliders. Now, there's three different settings that you can do up here, smoke, fire, and sedentary. Now, the sedentary is the one that I chose, and I think that's the one that looks the best with this particular effect. Uh, the other thing to take a look at is your wind direction. If we go back to our original reference shot right here, and I know this is a still image, but if you look at the video clip, it looks like energy is just being emitted from the handle, uh, going in the direction, moving away from the handle. So in the case of this long end right here, it just looks like it's kind of shooting right out of that handle. So because the lightsaber is kind of pointed down here towards the right of the frame, I've got my wind direction headed in the same direction. So again, if I hit play right here, it'll look as if it's just coming out of the handle and moving in that direction jaggies up the edges of the lightsaber and gives us that distortion around the end. So if we take a look at the settings over here, the distortion amount's relatively low. That's actually lower than the default value of, I believe, 10. Heat amount has also been greatly reduced. Noise scale has been reduced. Um, the noise scale has been reduced big time because we want everything to look relatively small coming through here. We don't want big, huge blotches. If the blotches are too big, it's going to look like the lightsaber is basically turning on and off in certain sections of the of the bar here. So this is basically what we're looking at right here for basic settings. The other thing that's really nice to know about the heat distortion plugin, or any plugin for that matter, is if you have your animation presets handy, you can always save your current settings as a preset. So that way, if you ever need to create this effect again, or if you're going to create a scene that has more than one lightsaber, you can apply the same settings to both lightsabers. If you check out some of the reference shots online, the trailers, uh, you may notice that the new lightsabers have an almost electric type feel to that. And a lot of that has to do with the sound design. But After Effects has a couple of different lightning effects, one called Advanced Lightning and one simply called Lightning. So another thing I did is I threw the lightning effect on here to give you a feel for what that might look like. It too has uh, start and endpoint parameters, so you can simply click on your frame where you want the effect to start, and then click someplace else in the frame where you want the effect to end. And then a lot of these are very self-explanatory parameters that I did just to add a really subtle effect. You can kind of see it flickering on and off as we travel down the beam right here. But anyway, that might be a real subtle addition to this effect that uh, may suit you. All right, let's bring this all together with a grade. I'm going to hit Control alt y to create a new adjustment layer. Go up to Effect, and Magic Bullet, Looks. Open up the Looks Builder by hitting Edit. And let's go to the Subject category. We'll go ahead and throw Colorista on there. And let's definitely cool off the shadows. And the reference shot was in the forest in the winter. They had a very cool look to it. Drop down here. Take a look at the RGB parade over here, and it looks like we're about maxed out on our blues right there. Now, the saturation's a little intense. I'm going to drop the saturation here. Gonna raise that blue a little bit. I think I am going to pull a little bit of that blue out with our HSL adjustment. So I'm going to come down here. This will control your lightness. This is saturation over here. So I'm going to take some of that blue. Take a look at the uh, vector scope over here. You can see we're a little intense with that blue. So let's pull a little of that out. That about there. Now, in reality, we would probably do the same effect over here to these two, but for the sake, I'm just going to pull some of the intensity out of that red. Obviously, if I go too far with that, that's going to start to affect the actual lightsaber. So I don't want to go too nuts, but I want to slightly desaturate that, these handles, so they're not as bright red like that. There we go. We'll darken up some of the edges with a vignette. Rearrange that about there. And I think I may pull the camera down just a little bit, darken up the entire scene like that. All right. Did okay? All right, folks, I hope you found these tips useful. Um, just my style of teaching is not to give everybody the blow by blow when it comes to tutorials like this. You know, step by step instructions are not always useful because every shot is different. Uh, the settings are going to change from shot to shot, from clip to clip. So just kind of focus on some of the techniques and concepts that were covered tonight. Um, when it comes to visual effects, have an idea. 
basic general goal of where you want to head and experiment. Throw some effects on there, tweak some settings, see what you come up with. If you like it, awesome. If not, delete it, move on. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the box below. I'm Joe Baker with the Edit Bay. I'll see you next time.